Hey guys, it's Saitama here. Hope you're having a fantastic evening because it is evening for me. And let's get to it. Cue the intro. So cheating in schools, good or bad, it's up to you, really. It's up to school faculty, it's up to each and every one of us to decide whether it's good or bad. But I want to change how we look at it. I want us to change how we look at the school system, how we look at cheating. And this is not going to be a very in-depth talk. Obviously, we will talk about some very deep topics about school cheating and what to do about it or what maybe to change in schools to retroactively deal with cheating. Because realistically, this could be a topic, this could be a thesis statement for a, for a PhD in education. This is not something that can just be covered in a 5 minute to 10 minute video on YouTube. Although, I will do my best to just talk about it even in the shallow ends and just really get started. So, the first reason why a lot of people cheat in schools, whether it's college, university, high school, wherever, or even as early as middle school, is test anxiety. I know I've had test anxiety my entire life. I remember the first time I failed a test, I was in grade two, it was a math test, and I got an R, which is an F, essentially. In Canada, we called them R's. Um, I don't know why, because later on we changed it to F's in higher education, so I, I can't answer to you why we called them R's in my elementary school, but we did. And I found myself very, very scared to show that to my parents, and yeah. They yelled, they did things, it was, it was a whole situation. <laughs> and this causes problems because when you fail something, instead of learning from your failure, you end up being fearful of failure. Especially, of course, in terms of environment. Now, school doesn't necessarily foster that fear for failure, that's usually an environmental thing. But that's something that we have to, we can't ignore, basically. Where we grow up is gonna dictate how we look at our success and our failures and what is success what is failing so with that being said test anxiety is a huge one you could forget something even though you've studied for two weeks i've had a situation in university where i studied for a french test for a solid two weeks emily can back me up right emily of course yep because she helped me with that and i still blanked now i got lucky and the professor that was with me knew about this knew that i studied my butt off those two weeks and literally sat right in front of me and saved my sorry little butt because they ended up reciting literally tons of verbs and conjugations in front of me in front of the entire class because they realized i needed that because they realized teaching and learning is more than just the test it's about do you know it but also, it's not about can you memorize it, it's about do you understand it. Now I know it 100%, like the back of my head. But at that point in time, I couldn't do it. I, I just lost it. I lost everything. And it sucks because it's one of those things where in the real world, we're not going to need to know it necessarily by heart all the time. Sometimes it's okay to look it up. Sometimes it's okay to have a refresher. That's the thing, right? And test anxiety, we can go so much into it, whether it's high stakes, so trying to get into an Ivy League school, whether it's just trying to graduate from high school, whether it's trying to get into a specific high school of choice. There are so many reasons why you could want to cheat on a test. And that's just one of those things. Test anxiety is real. Tests are obviously real. And the problem is, when we have so much cheating, it's because of high stakes. It's because of all the anxieties we bring from home to school. It's because we just might blank out or we have a disability of some sort that is not necessarily, we're not aware of. And all of a sudden, when you do that test, you just blank out or who knows what. Point being, test anxiety is a real thing and that can cause a lot of unnecessary cheating as a result. Point number two, to some it actually doesn't matter. Like, they don't care. And this is the type of cheating that I don't condone ever. And I know that might sound weird to you, like, wait, you condone cheating in some fashions? Well, yeah. <laughs> and I condone cheating because I don't condone cheating. I condone cheating because of how our school system is set up. And we'll go more into that into point three. But what I don't condone is when you don't care, but you, you might as well just sift through, like, 
float through everything with relative ease. That is not the point. You're not learning anything if you're just cheating. To me, cheating isn't because you're just trying to pass. Cheating is much more than that, and it's a much bigger problem. What I'm trying to say here is that if you are just cheating just to get through everything, what are you learning? What, what, what is your goal? Because I think a lot of, of the time, people that cheat with no goal in mind are the type of people to cheat in everything. And that includes in sports, that includes in card games, that includes in like, uh, like poker or stuff like that, that includes in obviously schools, everything. Maybe even in their life, love lives. Now, this is obviously not backed by statistics, but generally speaking, people that do cheat have a hard time stopping. That's factual. That part is factual, that people that cheat have a hard time stopping. They're, they have a hard time saying no to it because they did it. They, they got away with it. Chances are you're going to do it again, right? So it's just a matter of one of those things. So if, if school doesn't matter to you, you got to figure out what does. And yeah, potentially the school system is failing you. Potentially you're struggling at home. Again, a lot of environmental issues can play a heavy role in how you do in your school. At the end of the day, what I really want to advocate for and again, this is kind of going into in point three, but I just really advocate for education over schooling. Schooling meaning you are doing the day-to-day -day work and you're really just there for the grade. You're not necessarily learning the concepts. You're not necessarily understanding what you are being taught. You're there to try to get the highest grade average you possibly can. And that causes cheating. Whereas I really advocate for education. This means that you are not just being taught what given like material to, to, to basically ingest, but you're being taught it. You understand it. You are learning it. You're not worried about the grade. You're more worried about, do I understand these concepts? What more do I need to know to understand? Because even if you understand a lot of these things, doesn't mean that you will understand every question you are given during a test. But likewise, potentially you do. And that's the thing. Everyone learns differently. Everyone learns at their own pace. What I knew now in math versus what I knew back in high school is laughable. I could ace a lot of my math tests now, whereas back then I would not be able to do so well. And it just comes to the fact that it's all about learning at a certain pace at our own level. And the problem is our school system is not set up for that. But the point is when we don't care, usually there's a problem at home. There's also a problem that's just generally affecting us. And the problem is our school system is not built to have help teachers help their students as effectively as we could. And finally, point number three, why people cheat in schools, why people don't really care. Tests don't generally correlate to the workforce. Now, this is not true for every interview. And I say interview because some interviews, interviewees or interviewers will be given or be uh, will give a test, like a, an aptitude test to kind of see what you know, what you don't before considering hiring you. Now, this is not true for every workplace and it depends on the workplace you are going to. However, what, there, what we must talk about is the fact that as we are already in the workplace, let's say we're already hired, we are doing our jobs, nobody is going to question you if you don't understand something and you decide to Google it. It's not a test. It's a, maybe a big project that potentially could be a make or break your job, but no one is going to say, ah, oh, they're Googling it. They must not be a good employee. In fact, no, they encourage you to Google it because an, a good employee is someone that can Google things fast and find answers fast or efficiently. Actually, less than fast, find answers efficiently. Find ways to solve problems efficiently. Something that schools don't teach us. We don't actively learn how to solve tests efficiently. We learn to study, we learn to keep ourselves organized. And if there's one thing that the schools can at least pat themselves on the back on is that tests force organization or you fall behind. And the problem with even that is that because we're forced to be organized, if you have a full time a job while you're in high school or in university, if you have even a part time job or you're struggling because of make to make ends meet, having family problems, <clears throat> all these other things that, you know, school doesn't care about, then you are more likely to fall behind and as a result need to cheat. But the nice thing about in jobs is that it's harder to fall behind 
in most case scenarios because a you either have already started your own family or you're a little bit more detached from your family assuming not everyone's the, this is not the case for everyone or alternatively you can stay late just keep doing your work you don't have to go back home all the time maybe you do but usually office jobs allow you to just stay in as long as you need to right so there's also that i'm a streamer i'm a youtuber you guys know that for those of you that watch me but I don't need to cheat because my job doesn't require that. In fact, I rely on Emily a lot when it comes to fixing microphone issues, tech issues. Sometimes I fix it myself or vice versa, but generally it is her. But I don't expect her to know it. She doesn't just know it. She Googles it. And the thing about schooling is that when we focus on schooling, remember I talked about that, when we focus on schooling, trying to get good grades. And school really is about schooling you. It's not really about educating you. If you get education out of school, that's great. But school's primary job is to build a factory worker. Build someone that can literally just work eight hours a day and just do the, the daily grind every single day. I, for one, can't do that. I tried. <laughs> it was awful. I was the worst employee ever. And it was thanks to Emily that, you know, I looked better than I did. So it's one of those things, right? You have to really understand what you are doing, what you are trying to achieve from school. And a lot of people cheat because they're being schooled. A lot of people cheat because when they go to the workforce, no one is ever going to try to see are they cheating because there is no more cheating. At least not in the same sense as in schools. You aren't allowed to Google things. You're allowed to use resources. You're allowed to use everything is at your disposal. That's the difference. And until schools update the way they teach, the way they generally give grades, or potentially even consider just doing a pass or fail, we're going to always have issues where we try to make this elitist concept, this elitist idea that learners are only and only quantifiably valuable based upon their grades. And that's toxic. Anyways, guys, that's the video. I'm so sorry that we couldn't go any further in depth. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of circular talk as well because it's really hard to always keep everything in focus, especially when you're really just talking in general and really trying to dive into such a deep concept. Like I literally said, this could be a PhD thesis. This is something that is so deeply problematic in our school systems. And you know, cheating is a byproduct of what we've built more so than the problem. And that's the thing. Once you frame it in the sense that cheating is not the problem, but created by a problem, you understand why people start to cheat. Now, <clears throat> of course, cheating is by rules, not allowed. In fact, that can get you expelled or, you know, suspended or whatever the case may be, depending on where you are in your school system. But when over 60% of people in colleges or universities cheat on average, it says a lot about the the university, a lot about what is going on, a lot about schools. And you may disagree with me and say, no, but cheating is wrong. But then in that case, you're not looking at the bigger picture. What caused cheating in the first place? And as soon as you realize it's schools, that's your aha moment. But anyways, I digress. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, please have yourselves a salty day and don't forget to tickle that like button and please don't hesitate to hit that subscription button and to click the bell for more notifications so you never miss another video. And once again, have a salty day and I'll see you in the next video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please don't hesitate to click that subscribe. And please don't forget to and please don't hesitate to hit that subscription bell.